the benefits of both the Capital One Venture X card and the good old Chase Sapphire Reserve can get you traveling in luxury with business and first class flights or five star hotels around the world, all without paying the price tags of thousands of dollars. But what makes these cards so special? How do they compare? And how do you get maximum value out of these cards? Well, we have a lot to cover, so let's jump right in. And so starting with the Capital One Venture X card, this is the new kit on the block that was just released last year, but in my opinion has been giving all the other travel cards a run for their money. Starting with the sign up bonus, the Venture X is offering 75,000 points when you sign up and hit the minimum spend of $4,000 in the first three months. And because you can redeem these points at one center point for travel, that's a value of $750, giving you a return on spend of about 19%. Though there are more ways to squeeze even and more value out of these points, upwards of two cents a point with other redemption methods that we'll talk about later. For most people using credit cards, the sign up bonus accounts for a big portion of the value from the card. Because unless you're spending tens of thousands of dollars every year, it's really hard to earn 75,000 points purely on spending. With the card giving you two times points for all purchases, you would need to spend about $38,000 in the year to reach that 75,000 points. But speaking of spend, this card also gives you 10 times points when booking hotels and car rentals through their portal and five times points on flights also booked through the same portal. Usually these type of portals are the same if not more expensive than what you can find direct with the airline or on sites like Expedia. But this portal is more unique in that it has price drop protection on their flights and guaranteed price match for hotels claiming they'll beat sites like Expedia. Just know that if there are any issues with the flight, especially during times like these when people are revenge traveling, it is more of a hassle to go through a third party instead of dealing direct with an airline. Now this card does have a $395 annual fee, but it's lower than the Chase Sapphire Reserve and it has easy to use credits that more than make up for that price. First, you'll get 10,000 points every anniversary year, which at a one cent per point valuation, that's a $100 value. Then you'll also get $300 in travel credit for booking through their portal. Both of these are credits that should be fairly easy to use, especially if you travel at least once or twice a year. And if you're getting one of these cards, you probably are. So given you can use both credits every year, that's $400 in credits, which essentially means means you're getting paid $5 a year to keep the card open and use all its other amazing benefits. Okay, before we get too far into the details, let's switch gears and see what the Chase Sapphire Reserve card has to offer. First, the card comes with a 60,000 point signup bonus when you hit the same $4,000 in the first three months. Now you can redeem Chase points for straight cash back at one cent per point in value, giving this bonus a $600 value. But with the reserve, you could redeem at 1.5 cents a point through their travel portal, giving this bonus a value of $900, which means a return on spend of about 22.5%, which is higher than on the Venture X card. But similar to the Venture X, there are other methods that can give you even more value for these points. Then when it comes to spending, it gets a bit complicated on the reserve. In terms of multipliers, you'll get a similar 10 times points when booking hotels and car rentals, and five times points on flights when booked through the portal. And, three times points when you're booking all other types of travel. The first two are essentially the same as the Venture X, but the three times on all other travel can come in really handy because it covers travel like Uber or even bus fares. You'll also get 10 times points at Chase Dining, three times at restaurants including takeout, and one times points on all else. So in comparison, Chase has more categories you can earn higher points at, like three times on travel and dining, but Venture X has a higher catch-all category with two times points on everything. When it comes to credits, the reserve also has a similar $300 yearly travel credit, but is more flexible because it covers all travel charged to the card, not limited to any portal. This should make the credit very, very easy to use, bringing the annual fee down from a high $550 to an effective $250. There are a couple other small credits on this card as well, including more lift points, 
$10 a month to GoPuff and Dash Pass with a $5 monthly credit. If you end up using all of these credits, that's about $180 a year in more value, which would bring down the annual fee even more. Now, how do these two cards compare? Given that most of the value comes from points, and the earning multipliers aren't that different, we should look at the difference of value between the two point currencies. I usually categorize redeeming points into three categories, straight cashback, regular redemptions, or transfer partners. With straight cashback, the Venture X will only give you 0.5 cents a point in value, whereas Chase will give you one cent a point in value, but both of which I do not recommend. Instead, for the Venture X, you can redeem Capital One points at one cent a point in value for travel through their portal, which is decent, but on the reserve, you can redeem points at 1.5 cent a point for travel through their portal, which is 50% more than the Venture X. On top of that, the Chase Redemption is also possible on the pay yourself back categories, which right now includes Airbnb, dining, membership fees, and charity. If you're planning to use your points in this manner, then Chase easily wins here. However, the most optimal way to use points is to transfer to travel partners and redeem that way. There are plenty of travel partners you can redeem with, and I'll have some links down below for more details. But for some examples, on both programs, you can transfer to Aeroplan to book travel and take advantage of adding a stopover for just 5,000 more points. Or transferring to version red to book ANA business class for just 90,000 points round trip, easily valuing your points at about 10 cents a point. However, a lot of these high value redemptions really occur when you're booking for business or first class travel internationally. If you're looking to stay more domestic within the US, then the valuations you get won't be that high. For domestic, Chase might have the slight upper hand because you can transfer points to World of Hyatt to book hotels and get about two to four cents a point in value. For example, take a trip to Kauai in Hawaii and book a room for just 25,000 points instead of paying almost $900 per night, which will give you almost four cents a point in value. Either way, if you plan to use your points through travel partners, I'd use an average of two cents a point for both programs. Now, given they're both travel cards, they have plenty of other perks as well. Both cards have your typical primary auto rental waiver, extended warranties, return and purchase protection, as well as luggage and trip delay or cancellation reimbursements, and credit for global entry or TSA pre-check. However, the Venture X also comes with cell phone protection up to $800 in reimbursement for damages or theft. To Chase's defense, the Freedom Flex also has a cell phone protection perk, and it's a card that has no annual fees. Then when it comes to travel, we gotta talk about statuses. For a premium travel card, it's still surprising to me that the Chase Sapphire Reserve doesn't give you elite statuses at any programs. But things could be changing because there's a temporary offer where you'll get Marriott Gold for three months with the option to extend it through to February of 2024. Although it's still not much compared to other luxury cards like the Amex Plat, giving you Marriott and Hilton Gold. On the Venture X though, you're still not getting that many elite statuses because you'll only be getting Hertz President Circle that can then match you over to National Executive Elite and Enterprise Plus Platinum, both of which are top tier statuses that will essentially give you any car on the lot. Then during travel, you'll probably spend quite a bit of time at airports, so lounge access is key. Both cards will give you priority pass access to over their thousand lounges around the world with two additional guests, but the Venture X will also give you Plaza Premium lounge access too. Also, both Capital One and Chase are looking to open their own network of lounges too, but we're still in the early days, so we'll have to see how those play out. One thing that the Venture X is better here at is giving free authorized user cards, each having their own lounge access. Whereas on the Chase Sapphire Reserve, they charge $75 per extra card. Now the golden question, which one is right for you? Well, it is possible to just get both, especially when you can hit both the minimum spends and be able to justify and use all the credits. This should be easier on the Venture X 
given they'll essentially pay you $5 a year to keep the card open, but it's a harder choice on the reserve. Also remember, Chase has the 524 rule, meaning you won't qualify for new cards if you've had more than five new cards in the last 24 months. There's also a Chase Sapphire rule saying that you won't be able to get a Chase Sapphire bonus if you've had one in the last 48 months. But speaking of bonuses, you should keep an eye out for the Chase Sapphire Preferred, the lower end card with a $95 annual fee, given that it usually has a higher sign up bonus of 80 or even 100,000 points. If you're able to get it at 100,000 points, that's probably the better card to go with here. All in all, I think if you want a one card setup that is well-rounded, easy to use and justify, go with the Venture X. If you utilize the wider range of spending categories on the reserve, or want to redeem through the portal or pay yourself back at 1.5 cents a point, then go with the reserve. You can also consider expanding your arsenal with cards like the Freedom Flex and Unlimited on the Chase side, or the Saver card on the Capital One side in order to get even more points and pool them all together. And finally, if you really enjoy traveling or doing so in luxury, then get both cards. But before you sign up, consider how these cards stack up with others like the Amex Plat, where you can learn more about in this video here. Let me know which card you plan to get down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.